Hello everybody, it is me, Vincent, and we are back here at City Walk, this time to have lunch at one of my personal favorite restaurants, The Cowfish. They got it all. They got burgers, they got sushi, they got burgushi. What's burgushi? Well, you're about to find out. And after that, we're going to head over to the new Universal Studios store to pop our heads in there and see what's going on in there. So welcome to the latest episode of Vincent Vision. Watch out. Hey everybody, it's me, Vincent. Welcome back to the latest episode of Vincent Vision. I'm back here at City Walk. Yeah, we're having lunch. Cowfish has been here at City Walk since 2014. And while it's really, really popular and it's like one of the spots that a lot of people end up going to, it's actually not a universal owned restaurant. It's not like a Vivo or like a Tubesome. They actually started in North Carolina and I think this is their third cowfish, but it definitely feels like the most popular because this place has always got people here. I will say getting a reservation for cowfish, especially during this like lunchtime, was a lot easier to get than Tubesome. This one here, I was able to look online, which I, I found out how to look online, by the way. I know in my previous Tubesome video, I said, oh, I didn't know how to find it online on the website. It's there on the website. I wasn't looking hard enough. It's right there if you're looking on like a desktop computer, but if you're looking on your phone and looking at the website, just scroll all the way down. There's like a link to make a reservation online. Just go there. It'll help you find a spot to get lunch or dinner here at Cowfish. Cowfish simply is gonna be burgers and sushi. The big draw for me and what I think makes Cowfish really, really unique is their burgushi menu. Okay, best way to put it is it's like sushi made with burger stuff and then burger stuff made with sushi stuff. So I'm gonna get something called the High Class Hillbilly, which is like pork sushi rolls. It's really, really good, I've had it before. And I'm gonna get their bento box, which has some sushi and like a little bit of fries and like a little burger and stuff like that. And for an appetizer, I got something, the Crab Rangoon Dip. So there's like a little bit more uh, like sushi kind of Asian style food here done in really fun ways. And that's why I like this place a lot. We got our spot right over here and check it out. This is the menu for the cowfish. <laughs> I actually learned from a viewer that if you actually scan the QR code on the video, you could actually read the menu for yourself. So here you go. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. This here for my appetizer, I got the crab rangoon dip. This is fried wonton chips with some crab sauce. This is a fun little take on chips and dip here. This has got some spicy chili on it. Look at those chips. Let's get a little bit of that. It's like fried wonton, so it's like not as heavy as like a regular pita chip or like a nacho or something. And this crab dip is really light too. It's got this little like crust on top of it. It makes it really good. Oh my god, I dropped it. I'll clean it up, give me a second. There are a couple other things on the appetizer menu that look pretty good. I've had the edamame here before and like believe it or not, it's actually like really good. They use like little sriracha salt. They have a Parmesan bacon truffle fries that I know are really, really popular and I've had that before too. Those are all really good. This crab rangoon is awesome. Spiced shrimp, they have hummus, they have a poke dip. There's a whole bunch of little things like that scattered throughout. It's a lot of fish and sushi style stuff on this menu. Go figure, but this is really great. So, so far so good. I'm excited to order. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the high class hillbilly. Look at this, yeehaw. <laughs> I don't even know how to get into this right now. Okay. There we go, this is our burgushi right here. You see that? It's pulled pork, oh, it's falling apart. But there it is. There's a pulled pork, kind of like a sushi roll. It's over there. Something like this is definitely good to maybe share <laughs> as an appetizer. Maybe not order as one person and then get a bento box as well. But I had to try it for the video, I had to get it. This right over here. So like I said, like the burgushi is kind of like this like hybrid menu. So think of like sushi made with burger stuff. Like for example, something that I've had here before too and I know is really popular, the All-American Bacon Double Burgushi. That's a lot of words, but it's basically a roll of sushi made with beef, bacon, all that little stuff all put together and presented in a way to look like a sushi roll. But it's all beef, you know, you're not having like tuna with beef and like this weird kind of thing. It's just flipped ingredients. It's still fun and, and, and it's fun. It's definitely, in my opinion, the standout sort of 
thing here at the Cowfish, the way they combine these two different menus and offerings and flip them and invert them and stuff like that. Awesome, thank you so much. And this right here, this is my main course. This is the traditional bento box over here. I've got four rolls of sushi, a little burger, some sweet potato fries, which by the way, I love sweet potato fries, some edamame, some stuff. Ta-da, this, this is great. This is an entree. This is something you share. This is an entree, for sure. Yeah, I could come here for lunch and just order the bento box, and I think that would be awesome. Look at this little tiny burger <laughs> I've got here. <laughs> this comes with the bento box. And like I said, you really get a little bit of everything here for a decent price. This was about $15, $17, I think. Some of the burgers that sound really good on this menu, the jalapeno popper showstopper, the backyard burger, the Texas Longhorn, black and brie. They have a burger called the Cowfish has officially left the building, which is a full pound beef burger. <laughs> That's insane. Yikes. And as far as desserts go here, they do have milkshakes available and they look pretty big. Like the table across from me has a milkshake that's pretty tall. It's like this big. It's definitely bigger than like a toothsome milkshake and maybe intended to share. They also have some cheesecakes and some smaller dishes as well, but I'm not getting dessert. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not happening. I've got a lot here on my plate here. Let me show you everything that I'm working with today for this video. I am not getting through all of this. I barely touched the Bergucci over there. I like that high class hillbilly. There's just so much on it. I don't even know where to start. I gotta pick through my bento box here, get some more sweet potato fries, eat some more edamame before I feel comfortable getting out of here. There is seriously a lot to go through on this menu. And I almost feel like I'm not giving it enough justice because there's 20 rolls, there's 17 burgers. They're all unique in their own ways. But I think what I got here was a good little taste of what they have available. The bento box gives you a little best of both worlds. The burguji is a mix of both worlds. So like, I think I think this is a good representation. All this, this mess right here, this right here. You can get some outside seating as well. And if you do, you get a pretty good view of all the city walk and Universal over there, islands over there. Can't see the Velocicoaster from here though, so loses some points on that. They got some seats at the bar over here. I remember there used to be tons more seats at the bar over here, but obviously because of social distancing, not as many now. If you ever wanted to see what a cowfish looks like, it's right there. There he is. Oh, where, there you go. Oh, he's fast. <laughs> Head up to the restrooms. Look at this cool artwork they got of the dinosaur from King Kong and then Kong himself. That's awesome. Got the restrooms over here and this like second floor, third floor, which they're not using right now, but you get a really, really great view of everything up here. I've eaten up here before. You go over here and you should be able to see everything. Yeah, there you go. Let's zoom in there. Now you can see the Velocicoaster. Points added. You also get this fun little angle of the new Universal Studios store which we are gonna head over to in just a second. All in all, Cowfish was honestly a pretty solid time. I think I ate a little bit more food than I should have eaten. I forgot how big the portions can be at a place like that, but that is a restaurant that if you go with a big group, I think you'll have a really, really good time. It's a great solid spot for lunch. It'll do well for dinner, but I enjoyed it a lot, a lot, a lot for lunch. And I think, oh my gosh, the thing's about to fall off, isn't it? That's what's happening. I feel like I enjoyed it a little bit more for lunch. And I know it's kind of a stretch to be inside the park and step out in the city walk to come over and get lunch, but it is like closer than most places. It's not like being at like Magic Kingdom than trying to go to Disney Springs for lunch. City Walk is pretty much right outside of the theme park. So if you're looking for a good, decent sit down lunch experience, Cowfish isn't a bad spot. But if you also come here for dinner, I think you'll be happy as well. But now that I've got some food in my belly, I should probably try and like walk this off, even though I'm really not going that far. I'm going to the Universal Studios store that just opened up a couple days ago. Checking that out, see what's going on in there. And we're gonna see how it compares. I don't think it's gonna be as cool as the Legacy store but we'll see. I do like this sort of gold entrance here. And then you come into the store itself and this is what you're looking at. This is nice, very clean, very modern. Honestly, it reminds me of like the gift shops at Cabana Bay and Dockside and stuff like that. Very uh, sort of, uh, what's this? What's this called? Very uh, shapey, kind of 
clean and modern and not anything particular. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to not say generic. I'm glad Universal is finally doing something like this where they have sort of their wall of t-shirt designs and some of these are actually really kind of cool and some of them are a little weird. <laughs> this one, this one's really funny. That's a terrible idea. But then this one over here, this one's kind of a little weird. I like these shirts a lot. These are designs that I haven't seen before. Wizarding Mom and Dad. That's pretty great. This is the cashier area, and they actually have this projection over here, which I've seen clips of the Velocicoaster. I'm gonna wait around here to see if I can get it on camera. Oh, there it is. Oh, Velocicoaster. You know, they've got the classic retro universal section right here at the front of the store, which is great, but I think we all know that it's time for the classic Islands of Adventure merchandise, all right? 1999. Let's do this, folks. It's time, Universal. Get on it. Get on it. Give us something good this summer. As you could imagine, they've got a whole Harry Potter section. One whole wing of the store is dedicated to Harry Potter, and they've actually got some unique stuff that I've never seen before, like these cups over here. I'm going I'm to grab one of these cups just to show it off. This is actually a really cool sort of home decor. Look at all the houses of Hogwarts. This is really cool. This is like the kind of theme park merchandise I enjoy. It's not so like beat over your head, obvious. It doesn't say, you know, Universal Studios on it or anything like that. That's really cool. And they've got also some plates as well, some cups over here. This Hello Kitty. I don't think she's part of the display, but you know, there she is. This is cool. This is really, really cool. I like this. I hope the store adds more of this kind of stuff. They've also got this whole section of the store over here where you can buy wands and some more Harry Potter merch. And like this area is really well themed and decorated. Like the wall has the tapestry over here and the constellations on the top. I kind of wish the whole store had rooms like this, like one room themed to Minions, one room themed to Jurassic Park or whatever. You can spin the wheel of wands, see all the different wands on display here, which is pretty nice. That's actually kind of useful. This is actually a really, really cool store. It definitely addresses a problem that the previous store had, which was size. This is a lot bigger. This feels twice as big, and there is tons and tons of merchandise here. So this is a really, really good place to go and pick something up if there's something that you forgot here. <sighs> All right. Had some good lunch at Cowfish. Got to pop into the studio store. I'm satisfied. Thank you guys so much for watching another episode of Vincent Vision. Thank you for watching another one of these City Walk videos. I'm having a lot of fun going to these restaurants, giving them the attention they deserve. City Walk is packed with a lot of really great places to eat during, before, and after your park experience. So expect more of these videos. <laughs> uh, I don't know if my belly should be having more of these videos, but it's fine. We'll deal with it as it comes. <laughs> That's all I got. I'm gonna get on out of here now. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, I'll see you at the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>